when it comes to cooking home camp or otherwise as far as I'm concerned there's nothing that quite compares with the behavior of a well seasoned skillet what exactly is cast iron seasoning is it a little container of metal filings that you keep in your cupboard that you shake on your eggs no is it all the salt and pepper that's left in the pan after cooking for decades on a cast iron skillet nope not that either is it the fact that oil soaks into your cast iron and therefore makes it more non-stick it's not that either the reason why I say those things is those are things that I used to think uh, was what a seasoned cast iron meant when you think of a seasoned cast iron skillet think more along the lines of a seasoned old sailor well you wouldn't think of an old sailor with a bunch of salt and well maybe salt you wouldn't think of an old sailor with a bunch of pepper and oregano all over him would you as a seasoned sailor no a seasoned sailor is someone who has seen many seasons he's been around for a while likewise a seasoned cast iron or cast iron seasoning implies the fact that it's been around a long time and has been cooked in many times and there is a somewhat magical yet very scientific process that happens that causes a cast iron skillet to be seasoned when an oil is heated to a given temperature the molecules somewhat fuse together in a process called polymerization polymerization there's going to be a test on that later spelling is going to be very important when those molecules fuse together and become a polymer of sorts it becomes a very very smooth surface it becomes a smooth surface and also that coating uh, that is the oil somewhat fills in the voids the microscopic and not so microscopic voids in the surface of your cast iron and it prevents an egg per se from having a handhold something to grab onto think of trying to climb out of a giant bathtub with slick sides vice trying to climb out of a lake with rocks on the side if you have texture if you have something to grab onto you stick to that surface considerably better the reason this occurs in old cast irons the reason why it's called seasoning is because it happens over a long period of time when grandma first started cooking with her brand new cast iron it wasn't seasoned very well and she probably had to scrape eggs and bacon and whatever else out of it frequently maybe she knew this trick too so maybe she didn't have to who knows anyhow uh, over the years when you cook in a cast iron um, when you don't scrub it out when you don't wash it out to the down to the bare metal um, that polymer builds up and becomes becomes a good slick surface two questions I'm going to address today are can that process be sort of short cutted or do you have to just simply cook for 10 years on a cast iron in order to get it seasoned the second question being why would you need to reseason so first things first why I have here two examples of cast iron pans skillets that need reseasoned. The one on my left here is dry in the middle. And what's happened there is that we've put water in it too many times when it's hot. So if you're if you're throwing something in there that's frozen or um, something wet while the pan's already hot, that water creeps underneath the the seasoning layer and kind of pops it loose. And so you get what you have right here and I think the last thing that was cooked in here was tortillas so that just completely dried it out so this pan needs reseason this pan over here is brand new um, and I took a sander to it as well as a an angle grinder to make it smooth to make the surface smooth since that's ultimately what we're going for this pan the attention to detail was terrible in the manufacture the uh, surface when it was new was just absolutely rough like sandpaper rough so I sanded it down now it's smooth to begin with and both of these both of these pans now need to be reseasoned. The second question is can this process be shortcutted? And the short answer is yes. If you have a place to heat up your pan, preferably an oven or a barbecue, and if you've got a little bit of oil, you can uh, you can speed this process up considerably. I like to do it with the barbecue because it makes a considerable amount of smoke in the house and uh, 
Mrs. Squid doesn't dig that so much, so I like to do it outside where I'm not polluting the air on the inside of the house. Fire up your barbecue. And put your pans on the inside. You're going to leave them in here for a little while until you get about 350, 400 degrees. Make your pans nice and hot. Now that your pan is screaming hot, take it out or just flip it over. Pour a little bit of oil into it. Canola oil works. Olive oil works. Just a little dab of oil. And just kind of run it around. Now turn your pan upside down. Put it back in there. Same with the other one. Turn it upside down and put it back in the pan. Turn off the barbecue. The temptation at this point is going to be to just put it back in there, let it cook for a while, add some more oil, let it cook for a while, and then call it done. Don't do it. Resist the temptation. It turns out so much better if you let it cool off completely and then start the process over again. So we're going to do this at least twice in total. Uh, if you've got nothing to do, nothing better to do in an afternoon, you can do it three or four times and it just gets even better. Uh, another thing to note is it's pretty helpful to dump out that oil back into your jar before turning your pan upside down into barbecue. It'll help you to avoid an inferno. I have not yet let it cool down. I wanted to finish this before it got dark. We had a freak occurrence here in my corner of the world. We had a rainstorm. It kind of held me up. And uh, also eliminated another fact that I'm going to tell you about. This rainstorm came through. I was in the cool down on round number three. And my oil didn't bake on because it cooled down too rapidly due to the rain. So I'm going to say that it's worth your time to go ahead and put it back in there for a little while once you get uh, once you get the oil put in there and bake it for a little bit longer. Also of note, if you have the opportunity to buy oven mitts with silicone hand pads, don't. They're garbage. Now that everything's had a chance to cool down, and of course the rain stopped, I've got these pans inside, nice and cold. And that's that shine is, that's the coating. That's how shiny it is. Now there is some minor imperfections that'll have to be kind of scraped off, but uh, we'll just go ahead and cook in it. And uh, after the first couple of times, that ought to completely take care of that. If you're glad you learned this, click the thumbs up, click the subscribe button down here somewhere. I'll do my best to uh, continue delivering little nuggets like this. Um, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate your time. It's valuable. Thanks a bunch. I'll see you next time.